Welcome to our lecture online. If you want something challenging, here it is. This is a challenging problem. So let me explain what we have. We have a metal ring. Attached to the metal ring are two beads that have weight W1 and W2. Of course, that's the mass times acceleration due to gravity. They can slide on the ring frictionless. There's no friction. The two beads are connected to each other with a string. Now the question is, when they reach equilibrium, can you find a relationship between the angle alpha and the angle beta? Now the angle alpha is the angle between the string that connects the two beads and the horizontal. The angle beta is the angle from the center of the, of the ring to the beat and then to the perpendicular from that line to the center. So we have beta plus beta, that would be an angle of two beta, all the way between those two. So we need to find the relation between the two and here's the equation we're looking for. That the tangent of alpha is equal to W2 minus W1 divided by W2 plus W1 times the tangent of beta. Of course these are the weights of the two beats. So how do we go about doing that? Well we always need to go to our basic principles. So we know that the force of gravity will be acting on both of these. So what we can say here is that we have the force of gravity pulling straight down. So we call this uh, W or M, I guess I could have called it MG, but we'll call it W2. And over here we're going to have W1. And of course they don't have to be the same weight. So W1 like this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to divide each of those two vectors into the vertical and the perpendicular and parallel to the ring vectors. So now for that we'll use a different color. So here we can have a vector going in this direction and we're going to have a vector going in this direction like this. And we'll do the same over here. We have a vector perpendicular to the ring and a vector which is parallel to the ring like that. Okay, so now we need to define those two vectors. That means we need to define the angles. So let's do that. So here we can say that this angle here by necessity must be 90 minus beta and this angle here must be 90 minus beta because 90 plus this plus this will give us 180 degrees. All right, if I draw now. a line this way and I draw a line this way, I can see that this angle here must be alpha. Okay, now what are we going to call this angle right here? Notice that if this here, if I draw a line per parallel to this, like this, that means that this here must also be alpha. That angle must also be alpha. Okay, next what we need to do is take a look at this line right here. This line right here is perpendicular to this line. And this line here is perpendicular to this line. So the angle between these two lines must be equal to the angle between these two lines. So again, this is perpendicular to the line connecting the two beats, and this is perpendicular to this line, which means that 90 minus beta is the same as this angle right here. This must be 90 minus beta. And we can do the same over here. If I continue this line right here, notice that this angle here must be equal to this angle here, let's see here, if this goes across, this is perpendicular, that means that this angle here, from there to there, must also be beta. So now I think we have enough on that side. Now we need to do the same over here. So again, if I draw this line over here, and draw this line over here, then I can say that this here must be angle alpha. And if I draw a line that's perpendicular here, then I know that this angle must be alpha as well. And then this angle here, or this line here is perpendicular to this line. So these two are perpendicular to each other. And this line is perpendicular to that. That means that these two, this angle here must be equal to this angle here, which is 90 minus beta. And that means that if this 
If these two lines are perpendicular to each other and this is minus minus beta, then this angle here must be beta. All right, so now I have defined all my angles. The reason why I did that is ultimately what I want to do is I want to take this vector here and subdivide it into a vector which is parallel to the line connecting the two beats and perpendicular. And what I want to do here is I want to take this vector and subdivide into one that's parallel to one connects the two beats and the one that's perpendicular. Now I'll show you in just a moment why we're going to do that. First, let's define this vector in terms of this vector. Notice the angle in between is going to be 90 minus beta plus alpha. That would be this angle right here. So this is 90 minus beta plus alpha. That means that this line right here, or this vector right here, relative to this vector, so let's call this vector, um, okay, how about vector 1? So I can say that vector 1 is equal to w2 times the cosine, because it's adjacent to this angle right here, so times the cosine of 90 minus beta plus alpha. And then I can take this vector right here, I'm going to call this a force vector, force 1 in this direction, relative to here, notice that it's beta. So now we can say that force 1 is equal to vector 1 times the cosine of beta. And of course, vector 1 is equal to this, and I multiply that times the cosine of beta, I end up with F1. Now I'll do the same on the other side. First of all, I need to define this angle, right, this vector right here. Notice that this angle right here, from there to there, is going to be 90 minus beta minus alpha, because I need to take this angle minus alpha, and this angle here is 90 minus beta, subtract alpha from that, so that this angle right here, from there to there, which means that vector 2, hmm, I'm going to call this vector 2, I'm going to make this a 2, that way I have it related to w2, and over here I'll call this vector 1, and so vector 1 is equal to w1 times the cosine of 90 minus beta minus alpha. So that's the difference here. This is 90 minus beta plus alpha. This is 90 minus beta minus alpha. And now I have to define F, let's call this F1, let's call this F2. So that way I stay consistent. Let's call this F2, that way we don't get confused. So call F1. So F1 is equal to V1 times the cosine of beta. Oop, I wrote theta, I really meant beta. Okay. Now notice I have two relationships. I have this force vector defined as V1, which is defined here times the cosine of beta. I have this force vector here defined as V2 times the cosine of beta. And of course, if things are in equilibrium, then the two forces pushing or pulling in opposite directions must be exactly equal. If they're not equal, the beats will rearrange themselves until those two forces are exactly equal to each other. Which means, I could then say that F1 must equal F2, which means that V1 times the cosine of beta must equal V2 times the cosine of beta. And of course, the cosine of beta cancels which means I can then write that V1 must equal V2. And since I have V1 and V2 defined, I can then say that W1 times the cosine of 90 minus beta minus alpha must equal W2 times the cosine of 90 minus beta plus alpha. All right, so now we're going to write this so we can write this as the cosine of the sum or the difference of two angles. So in this case, we can write this as W1 times the cosine of 90 minus beta minus alpha. So here we're going to write as the difference of two angles equals W2 times the cosine of, here we write this as 90 minus beta 
plus alpha. So here we write as the sum of two angles and the difference of two angles. So now we have to find the proper um, trigonometric relationship. So this can now be written as W1 times the difference of two angles that gives us the cosine of 90 minus beta times the cosine of alpha plus the sine of 90 minus beta um, times the sine of alpha. So that's this rewritten as this. Hmm, I'm kind of out of room, am I not? Well, we'll see what happens. Equals W2 times, that would be the, the cosine of 90 minus beta times the cosine of alpha, and that will now be minus the sine of 90 minus beta, and I'm going to need this, make a little bit more room, times the sine of alpha, like that. Now what we want to do is we want to rewrite this 90 minus beta, 90 minus beta, 90 minus beta, 90 minus, minus beta, we want to rewrite that as follows. We can now say that W1 times the cosine of 90 minus beta is equal to the sine of beta times the cosine of alpha plus the sine of 90 minus beta is the cosine of beta times the sine of alpha equals W2 times, this can be written as the sine of beta times the cosine of alpha, and this can be written minus the cosine of beta. Sometimes I have trouble writing beta, so let me write this a little bit higher so I don't run out of room here. Let's put this down, V1, like that. So here we're going to write this as the sine of beta times the cosine of alpha minus the cosine of beta times the sine of alpha, like that. Now the next step, we have to realize the following. Notice we have the sine of beta, cosine alpha, sine of beta, cosine alpha. So we know that this and this is the same. And then we have the cosine of beta and the sine of alpha, the cosine of beta and the sine of alpha. So this is the same. So I'll put two brackets underneath it here. So these are the same. Which means we can collect common terms. So we can write this as... Uh, so here we can pull this out. We can say that W1, if we bring this across over here, we can write minus W2, because when we bring the W2 over here, multiply times the sine of beta times the cosine of alpha. So what I've done here is I multiplied this times this and brought it to the left side, so we have W1 minus W2 times the same quantity, sine of beta, cosine alpha, sine of beta, cosine alpha. And that must be equal to, if I bring W1 to the right side, it becomes minus W1 times this. So I have minus W1, and I take this negative sign and attach to this, minus W2 multiplied times what's remaining, which would be the cosine of beta times the sine of alpha. All right, where are we now? So notice that if I get rid of this negative sign, I can turn these two around. So now I can write this as W2 minus W1 times sine of beta times the cosine of alpha is equal to, get rid of the negative, so we have W2 plus W1, I'll write in that order, times the cosine of beta times the sine of alpha. Now what should I do? Okay, I'm getting close. So if I divide this, so W2 goes on the bottom here, I need a tangent of alpha. So if I divide this by, ah, okay, I think I see the next step now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide, I'm going to take the sine of, the, the cosine of beta and put it over here. So let's do that. So I'll take the cosine of beta and I put it over here cosine of beta, and I'm going to take the cosine of alpha and put it over there. So I take the cosine of alpha and put it over here. 
Of course, since I'm multiplying here, I have to divide. I'm multiplying here, I have to divide. Now, I see that sine of beta over the cosine of beta is equal to the tangent of beta. So that means that W2 minus W1 times the tangent of beta must be equal to W2 plus W1 times the tangent of alpha. And now since I'm out of board space, I think I'm going to go this far. But notice that if I now take W2 divided plus W1 and move it over here, end up at the right side, and then this is on the left side. So this is exactly the same as over here, over there, but just in a slightly different format. But essentially, what we're saying is that the relationship between the angle alpha and the angle beta is such that the difference of the two weights times the tangent of beta must equal the, the sum of the two weights times the tangent of alpha for that to be in perfect equilibrium. And that is how that's done.